the record. Okay. So today we are going to uh, implement the first version of a kinematic controller for a very basic uh, robotic structure. So this is uh, uh, what I uh, require you to do. That is inverse kinematics practice uh, lecture that is divided in a tree. So we are going to, 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 to implement in a, an incremental uh, difficulty. For today, we are going to uh, write two inverse kinematic algorithms, but basically you will see that is it uh, really almost the same with one line of code uh, difference. For a three-link planar robot, it is thus redundant. And uh, it's not redundant, sorry. It is a three-link, but we are going to control the position orientation. And uh, for today, only for today, it will be given as a set point. Then maybe you will uh, implement uh, the trapezoidal velocity profile later on, OK? So we have um, the dimension of the task that is 3, and the dimension of the robot is 3. So it is a square problem, it's not redundant. We are going to use a sampling time for our simulation of one millisecond. And uh, uh, we are not going to, let me say, to focus on orientation feedback for today in order to focus on the inverse kinematics. So basically, we are going to feedback the orientation simply as the desired angle minus the current one for a planar tree link and only for a planar tree link the orientation is the sum of the three joints okay this is true only for this one we can use uh, the uh, functions developed in the previous uh, lectures so we know that we do have the function that uh, compute the direct kinematics and the function that compute the Jacobian. And we are going to use those. Then, in order to write a code that is more or less, uh, let me say, not, not the same, because each of you can, can, uh, can implement uh, uh, the code with a different style or with different uh, choices. But let me say, if I want to give you some suggestions. Uh, it is uh, appropriate to have uh, a vector of time in your code, and the easiest way to do it is to, to define a vector t in that way. Goes from, actually, this is, <laughs> this is a bug, from zero to, to final time. Let me show you. So, for example, if I have t is equal uh, one millisecond, Ah, no, here I'm in the, okay, t equal. Uh, I, the font is too small, right? Uh, why don't you remind me? Okay, so this is t in the workspace. And for example, uh, final time is uh, two seconds, and we define the vector of time as zero t t con f okay and this is the vector of time and the length is in, t in this case 2001 sample of course so here there is a, a a typo i will correct this one this starts from zero and then uh, it is appropriate uh, to initialize each variable even if this is not strictly required by MATLAB. So, for example, Q is initialized to zero with the N rows uh, low, um, and the upper capital and uh, capital N columns. It means that uh, the row will represent the joint and this will represent the time. So, when I do write uh, uh, Q with this syntax, it means the vector of joint taken in Ti, so I multiplied by the sampling time. Uh, we are not going to simulate the dynamics of the robot, so for whatever will be the output of our kinematic controller, we will consider it as perfect, 
and thus the robot will simply integrate the velocity coming out from the kinematic control. Basically, the, the core of your code will be a for loop. You first initialize all the variable, then you will write a for, and you will implement those uh, four steps within the for loop. Generate the desired and the factor value, compute the current and the factor value, compare the output of the controller, and then the integration I will show you. In the end of the simulation, I want to see all the possible plots. Okay, so let us start. And uh, as usual, I'm writing the, uh, the code in front of you, and then uh, I will ask you to implement. So basically, this is uh, uh, example. Some comments, whatever. Okay, let us uh, uh, first define the, uh, our uh, um, robot. And we do know that uh, we already developed a uh, init.m file where we do have some, some parameters for the robot. So basically, those are the parameters that I want to use. We know that this is a planar trilink robot. I can define now DH, the Daniel Tartenberg as uh, A alpha D and theta. And now I may also draw robot DH just to see what is the initial configuration. Actually, uh, the initial configuration uh, for the planar tree link, if uh, we remember a little bit uh, the DH convention, uh, the vector theta contains the three joint position. So zero, zero, zero is basically uh, the name of, I run, the, I run my code just to, to, to check the proper definition of the variables. And actually, it's not very easy to, to see because uh, it's just uh, in uh, its... Uh, uh, that's it, straight line configuration. So this is the base frame, frame one, two, and three. Let us change a little bit the configuration. And for example, I want to have uh, the first in uh, 20 degrees, minus uh, 35, uh, and then uh, maybe 5. Uh, I need to use uh, uh, radians, so I can just uh, write it down in degrees, because uh, it's more uh, intuitive for us to use degrees, and then I just have the, the conversion embedded. I run it, I can run it this way. And now this is the current configuration, and it's a, it's a little bit uh, better visible with respect to the other one, okay? So now, only for this one, the, only for this kind of robot, the orientation of uh, the end effector uh, is uh, always characterized by the fact that uh, I, I put a 3D view that the fact that that Z axis will be always constant because of the structure of this robot that is very simple, very specific. And the angle that uh, around Z is given by the sum of uh, the three joint, okay? And this is true only for the planar, uh, planar robot. And we will use this uh, just because today we do not want uh, to have a complex problem, we want to have a simple problem. And so we do not want to care about the orientation. Now let us uh, move on. And this draw robot was simply in order to, I mean, to, to, to have a graphical uh, view of what's going on. Okay, so now 
let me, so this is the definition of, of the robot. I may also leave it, draw robot here in, in order to see. So now let us uh, see what is required by our problem. Uh, I need to assign a certain position and orientation, okay? So a certain desired position, I can uh, say that x desired is equal. Now, position, uh, if I have uh, my, my draw robot uh, still on, otherwise I evaluate. Uh, let us assign a reasonable position, something like uh, 1.5 uh, on x, 0 0.3 on y. This is meter, and then orientation, for example, I can try with uh, uh, 0, okay? And this is degree. But let, okay, let's us separate and say that this is C desired. Okay, so this is the desired final time, two seconds, sampling time, I say one milliseconds, vector time is zero, so final time, number of sample is length of t. And now I want to uh, allocate all the variables that I will develop. So I will develop Q. Now I allocate as a zero with N. Now N is not defined, is the number of joints. I can uh, simply have it here and say N is size of the H comma one. And sorry, sides DH. So it means that uh, uh, DH uh, is that the H table that contains uh, the parameters and the number of row is the number of degrees of freedom. So this is the, uh, the number of degrees of freedom. Now Q is, is pre-allocated, let me say, is all zero. The same with the velocity, that will be the output of my, of my uh, inverse kinematics. I can allocate also uh, the results of the delete kinematics. And now, for example, the position, x, there's zeros. Now, I, I may want to, to separate the position from in, the orientation. In such a case, I can have here two, and maybe it's better if I call it p, and also here, p desired. And for the orientation is the same, but with the, let me say, Greek letter C, one by N, okay? And uh, I may also want to, to, to plot, for example, uh, uh, the error. So position error is uh, zeros. And orientation error is one. Okay. Let us start uh, my for loop as uh, suggested. So here I implemented what is written here. Here I implemented what is written here. Now I need to write my for loop. So let me copy this. I don't know if I can copy from PDF, but let me write it down. For e equal one to n and this is my for loop. First, uh, generate desire trajectory. Then, uh, <coughs> compute direct kinematics. Compute control law in integration. Now, the integration is uh, simply given uh, in a substitution to a dynamic simulation. As I told you, we will assume that uh, everything is perfect. It means that the low-level controller is perfect. It means that uh, here I integrate Q, and Q is uh, given 
this is for i that goes from one to uh, capital N. It means that uh, every time I need to implement a discrete time integration. And now it, this means that uh, I can compute next step go in I plus one. Obviously, it's not that way, it is that way. Equal. plus t multiplied. Okay, so this is the integration. And this is what I need to compute uh, here in the control law. Okay, this is what I need to do here. Of course, this is, a, I mean, a command cannot be run. Actually, if I run uh, uh, this code here, I will have an issue with the i equal n capital N, because this will try to assign here uh, Q at N plus one. Now, in uh, some languages, this operation may give you a mistake, because uh, it means that uh, you are trying to access to the N plus one element of this matrix. However, MATLAB uh, will simply add this column to Q without giving you any error uh, message. Um, I don't like it so much because I do want Q have the same dimension as T, as the vector of time. So this is basically can be done if uh, I is smaller than N. So in the last, in the very last loop, do not integrate. Okay? This is basically what I'm doing here. Okay. So we are getting we are, we are writing our our code i save i cannot run any any debug here because i don't have uh, any control law available so I, I need to write some more code okay i need to 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 to, to generate the desired trajectory usually here i i may have a, a different kind of input for example I may have um, a trapezoidal velocity profile, or this can be connected with the real hardware, and I may want to control the end effect by a joystick or any other kind of input device. For today, and only for today, to keep it uh, as simple as possible, this will be constant, and um, actually we don't need to do it because we already have it here as constant, okay? So here, this is empty, because I will take the constant value of, uh, assigned out of the for loop. Okay, compute direct kinematics. Now I need to compute the current position for the end effector. I do have uh, the direct kinematics function, I can use it. So direct kinematics, I, I just uh, check the help of direct kinematics. And uh, if the help is not available, I open the function. Yes, the, the help is available. I show you, you can also write help. Okay, if you, if you write your own function, and ask MATLAB, what is the help of the function? He, MATLAB will write to you the, uh, the, um, the comments in the beginning of the uh, function, okay? So the input for direct kinematics is DH table with the number of row that is uh, the degrees of freedom and always four columns. The output is the homogeneous transformation matrices three dimension, four by four by n, okay? So it means that uh, this function will provide you the uh, homogeneous transformation from one to zero, from two to zero, from three to zero, up to n to zero, okay? And we need the last one, of course. So I can use this one. Sorry, uh, here, I can use this one. Compute direct kinematics. Now I should pay attention 
this is a the output is is uh, is uh, the homogeneous transformation matrix. I need to put attention here because now I need to provide the DH as input to the direct kinematics. Now DH here is constant, so I need to update the theta uh, parameter of DH, and theta parameters is given by Q. So here. I need to, to write something like dh is equal sorry the current dh uh, the first three columns because those are constant and then I do use the current value of q so it, you can notice that uh, I'm always updating the theta with the current value of the robot, okay? So now, direct kinematics gives me, as output, this kind of strange matrix. Let me, let me compute this one on the command window in order to check what I'm getting as output. Look, T is a multi-dimensional matrix. I only need to extract the last one. This is what I need, okay? From here, I need to, to take the position. So here, I have that. My position at sampling time high is equal T0. I need to provide three indexes here. I know that the last one is the number of degrees of freedom, is n. And now, the position, where is the position? The position is x, y, and z. I don't need z, because this is a planar robot. So, position x and position y. It means that uh, this, is the, this is the element uh, 1, 4, and this is ele the element 2, 4. So here, is from one to two, column four. This is the position, okay? Now, the orientation. We do know the, the, the rotation matrix is given by this three by three block. However, as a, and, and we can appreciate here that I'm rotating around Z. A planner is always uh, doing such a rotation. However, as I told you, we cannot we don't want to, to, to focus on orientation today. And so for me, this is the sum Q1 at sampling time i, Q2, Q3. Okay. I can write a comment in order to do not forget next week that this is not true for a generic robot, but only for today. Actually, I have to, to provide an index for this one. Uh, pay attention, P is, is we are addressing the I column that changes at every loop of my four. The same for the orientation, However, dh and t0, they are always uh, overwritten because we don't need them in the end of the simulation. So we don't need to keep their value during the, the execution of the, of the code. Okay, so now I'm already at a very good point because I do have the current position, I do have the current uh, um, orientation, and uh, I, I, I now need to compute the control law. So what is the control law? First of all, let me compute the error. The error in position is given by P desired minus the current P. The current P is this one, of course, no? I have to address the current element. However, P desired is constant. The orientation error is even simpler because this is uh, C desired 
this is the current six uh, C desired, minus C I. Okay, now what is the, uh, the inverse kinematic algorithms, the algorithm that I want to implement? Uh, I do remember that I need the Jacobian, so J is equal ja Jacobian. I don't remember the, for example, the syntax F Jacobian. Okay, this is the syntax. Syntax, uh, the input is the same for direct kinematics, and the output is for the geometric Jacobian. Uh, since we are not addressing the orientation, we know that uh, it's the same. And the Jacobian always has six rows. So here I have J equal Jacobian DH. Let me check uh, what's going on. For example, here, this is the Jacobian. I can appreciate that line, row three, four, and five at zero, and there will be always zero because of uh, the structure of uh, a planar robot. And then I have uh, the position, x, y, and the orientation. So I can say, okay, you can have the the Jacobian in a dummy variable, J dummy, and then your Jacobian may be obtained by only taking the proper rows of the previous Jacobian, okay? This could be, for example, your Jacobian. Okay, so we do have a three by three Jacobian now, we do have the error, and we do have everything we need in order to implement, for example, the inverse of the Jacobian. So in this case, this is given by uh, in J multiplied. Now, I may also have a more compact version and write Ah, sorry, here is only 1D. So in that way, this is 3 by 1. And this is the velocity. Now, maybe here there is a mistake, because uh, the error is defined as a matrix, and here I'm not putting the index, it means that uh, is going to overwrite it, so it's better to have it, so it's better, it's, it's, this is the correct version, and of course now I have to access the proper element of the error. Okay, it says that it doesn't like that we use imb, but uh, let me keep imb or pimb, I know that uh, if I write pimb, so the inverse, MATLAB will use imb when needed. So this is actually my algorithm. I'm missing something. I'm missing, of course, the gain. K. K should be three by three. And of course it's constant. So K should be somewhere here. Now, three by three, positive definite. In my case, I can have uh, something like uh, a diagonal matrix where I use uh, position and orientation. Position could be, let me put one and we will discuss later on about this one. Okay. Now, this is, uh, this is all. This is all. If I run uh, the, 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 this simulation, I would like to, to have as output uh, all, the, all the possible plots of all the variables. So first of all, let us define a new, a new uh, figure, subplot uh, uh, 
I divided into my, my figure, a two plot. In the first one, I put Q. And then X label and Y label, this is Q in radian. And I do the same with the, the Q. And of course, this is radian seconds. And I'm doing the same with the position. So I just copied all the code T. Here I have uh, P. That's uh, uh, P in meters. And uh, C, the orientation in radians. Okay, uh, the last, uh, the third figure is the figure with the errors. So now here I have EP. In meters, E O. Now this is radians because uh, we know that the quaternions is a dimensional, but, but this is real. Okay, now we start the bug a little bit the code. Okay, so let me clear everything and write my code. Okay. So now let us start see uh, what are the issues with the code. Uh, as uh, you noticed in the previous uh, um, lecture, MATLAB uh, is uh, able to recognize the syntax errors and to provide you some very specific, very specific uh, information. Now, the sides of the left hand side is two by one, and this is okay. The sides of the right, side is 2 by 2 and this is not okay line 44 this is line 44 now what is the issue maybe is this p desired yes because p, p desired is 1 by 2 with this syntax however p with this syntax is 2 by 1 because I'm taking the column i okay so the error is that here I need to define this one as a column vector. I show you in that way, okay, with this syntax. Okay, so let me try. Okay something uh, is not very nice but let me let me check what's going on okay this is a uh, this is the error uh, position a joint let me first start with with the joint uh, I like to have the grid so next time I will put the grid. Let me zoom here to, in order to try to understand. Well, uh, what's the issue? The joint position are a little bit too spiky, but uh, I mean, the, this is stable. This is the joint velocity, the same. It's not very nice. I wouldn't put this in a real robot. for the position of the end effector. Now, this is the position of the end effector. This is the position of the end effector. So it's going in the end where I do want it, it to go. And this is the rotation of the end effector. The orientation, sorry. The orientation is not going to zero, okay. The error for the position, 
the error for the position is going to zero, but this is totally unacceptable. So we are debugging and we need to understand what's going on. Okay, let us uh, play a little bit with our code. First of all, I do like uh, my, my plot with the grid option. And this is something that I'm just going to, to add. Okay, now, am I sure that uh, the desired position orientation is uh, physical? So let me do a uh, debug in a, a slightly different way. So let me consider, first of all, the initial configuration. I know that this is initial configuration can be achieved, and that this one, okay? So let me define again this one. Okay. And this is my initial configuration. And now let me just uh, assign a, uh, let me check the direct kinematics for this one. Let me assign uh, this as a desired and effector position orientation. In this case, the robot is, all, is already close to 1.5 and 0.2. 1.5 and 0.2. This is already close to 0.2. I run the, the code. Now this is uh, my my the out the the output of my of my uh, and it's still uh, I do have something that I don't like it okay but at least uh, I have the grid this is going only in one okay Okay, so let me check. The gain is usually the first place where you have to look for, uh, for troubles for issue. And in, in this case, uh, since we are using the inverse of the Jacobian algorithm, uh, this is strictly related to the constant time. Okay, so this gain is really to be considered as the eigenvalue of the, uh, the free evolution of our error. Okay, let me try making a debug and check a different value for the gain. I just, uh, what, by putting zero here, I'm just ignoring the orientation error. And this will only, only consider position with a much smaller value for the gain. I think that uh, this is a behavior that is uh, not very nice, maybe we are close to a singular configuration or there is a bug in the code, okay? So let me check. This is the DH and I'm always updating the H. This is the integration. Okay, this is the mistake. Can you, can you spot the bug? Anyone that uh, recognize in this line of code the, the huge bug that is present? We have uh, we have to multiply the, the Jacobian. Yes. yes. No, no, Jacobian. This is an integration, so it is t multiplied by the velocity. All are integration. Okay. The Jacobian is here. Let's see if this was the issue. Not sure, because this is also not uh, very nice. So maybe we are close. 
maybe we are close to a kinematic singularity and we should check this too, okay? Okay, so this is integration and seems to be correct. T is the sampling time and is has been defined here. This is by sure close enough. Theta is this one, and we draw, but we know that uh, it is correct. P desired is given by this one. This is correct. Okay, so let us try to have some, uh, uh, not cons, cheese. So this is something that uh, is always useful to do to check the numerical balance of your matrix. So now I defined uh, a condition number of j, now I just pre-allocate as zero, I don't know why this frame is not <laughs> disappearing. Let me, no, I don't know why. <laughs> no, this doesn't want to disappear. And it's also active. Uh, ah, okay. Let me try C J D I is equal condition number of the J matrix. So at every at each simple time I compute the condition number and assign to this value, and then I make another plot in which I check the value for for this variable. Condition number, I dimension. Let's check during this simulation, whose output is quite strange, because you, you see this is, a, this is a, the velocity is multiplied by 10 power four, so it's, clearly not phys physically acceptable. The position, okay, the orientation is not noisy because this is zero, as you can appreciate, this is really zero. Uh, the error is not going to zero, it doesn't have any sense. And this is my condition number. So the condition number, as you can verify here, is uh, 10 power 17. And condition number 10 power 17 means that I'm close to a singular configuration. Okay, so let me check a little bit because I didn't realize it. I'm not sure that this is a single configuration. So let me check because I've been so unlucky. To, I want to, mm, to get rid of this. How can I do it? No, this is not a singular configuration, the Jacobian. It should be somewhere else a, should be somewhere else a issue. Uh, 
I'm asking for the Jacobian and the Jacobian is good. Okay, I put here a breakpoint. It's not very clever to put a, a breakpoint within a fourth cycle because it will stop at level four. Okay, but now we need just to understand what is the initial value of our Okay, so here the Jacobian the Jacobian seems to be wrong. Uh, uh, uh. The H, uh, if you see the H, the last column is zero, zero, zero. And of course, if this is the case, this is a single configuration. But actually, uh, why this is zero, zero, zero is not clear to me. Uh, there is a problem here, okay? So everything is fine, but DH. Uh, ah, yes, okay. Okay, so. The bug is this one. Uh, now, theta is the initial configuration. Here, I initialize Q as zero, but I never assign the initial configuration to Q. So basically, in the very beginning, Q is equal to zero, and this is a singular configuration. So I have to say that here, the very first element of Q is theta. Okay, so now everything is fine and we'll, uh, we can discuss li a little bit. So let me check uh, the constant time is too, is too slow the condition number is fine okay let me run a let let me run a full simulation here i start with the uh, clear all close all search c let me put here something like a zero throw t a little bit different and with constant time, with the gain one, one, and run the exercise. Okay, so this is the initial configuration. So, uh, and uh, it's totally not singular. And uh, as we noticed, the issue was that by mistake, I was calling the, the, the function with zero, zero, zero. That is clearly a single configuration. So now here I can appreciate the position of the joint and the velocity of the joint. The velocities of the joint, if you look at that, are going to zero, not yet to zero. It means that the final time of the simulation and the gains are not uh, consistent to one each other. It's a little bit too small. And uh, this is a position, uh, the, the joint position. Let's see the end effector. End effector position and okay. rotation. We really asked for a very small uh, change in the position. 
This is the change in the orientation. Uh, going to zero, yes. Initially it's different from zero, it's going to zero. And those are the errors. Position errors are going to zero, orientation error is going to zero. Not yet, we should increment the final time or increment the gain. Condition number of the Jacobian, condition number is singular when it goes to infinity. Uh, 10 power three, 10 power four is not infinity, okay? This is 10 power one, so no issue at all. And this is the, we can have, uh, we can also draw uh, in this plot the, the final config configuration. So here, draw robot could be copied here. Okay, let me increment a little bit uh, the gain and run again the simulation. Okay, so now I I run twice the robot in the before and after the fourth cycle, and you can appreciate that the, the final is the assigned position 1.5, 0 0.3 with orientation 0. This is the initial configuration, okay? And the error now, let us check the errors. And the error, position error going to zero, orientation error going to zero, okay? So this is uh, exactly what uh, you're going to do now. Let me show you a couple of aspects uh, in the final code. This is the final code that I will upload on Classroom, or is it already there, I don't remember. First of all, you can have a variable to uh, decide if applying the inverse of the transpose of the Jacobian. And the difference will be here, the define of the gain, because the gain are not the same. And then here, simply, if, if your algorit algorithm is transpose, use transpose of the Jacobian. If your algorithm is inverse, use inverse of the Jacobian. Okay, let us run it uh, another time for uh, another configuration, one dot true, uh, I don't know, minus uh, uh, with uh, zero dot two. Let's see what's going on. I don't know if this is achievable or not. Okay, so this was uh, the desired final. Okay, so this is the initial and this is the final with the, the assigned values. I would like to stress that uh, today and also the next uh, lectures, we will not do graphical rendering because uh, I would like you first to plot all the variables, the errors, the joint and the velocities. So those are the joint position and those are the joint velocities, okay? Uh, the peak is a little bit high, but uh, this is what I told you last week. In regulation, uh, is something that we do not really implement on real robot because we have a peak in the very beginning of our simulation because all the errors is seen as a step reference in the beginning. But in next uh, lectures, uh, you will implement a trapezoidal velocity profile in order to avoid this drawback. So now, let us check. This is a drawback. We will uh, uh, manage later on, not now, okay? So this is the position and orientation of the end effector. Nothing to say, continuous values, not, so, not too dramatic. And those are the two errors going to zero. Nice, with a, a, you see, exponential behavior because this is the inverse. And now, okay, this is the condition of the, the condition number of the Jacobian, and that's fine. Okay, so now, 
what I would like uh, you to do is to uh, starting from all the material uh, that is uh, uh, present uh, since the last lecture, direct kinematics and Jacobian. You already uh, can use them, you already have it uh, or download it from Classroom. Then uh, you have the structure of your code given in the text of the example, the for the for and loop, and try to implement uh, uh, the same that uh, I, I have done uh, today. As usual, I stop recording the lesson, but uh, I'm here and I will ask you to to share your screen once every